morning, everyone. Welcome to robotics class. Uh, this is week 20. Gosh, I can't believe we're on week 20. Um, and so this week, we're actually moving into unit four. So we're going to be learning how to navigate a maze. And they're going to be introducing you to what they call the bumper sensor. Um, and so this is going to be another tool that you can use to move your robot around. So we're going to learn about what that is and how to use it. Um, and then you're going to be using the wall maze playground for um, this one. So let me put on a vid this quick little video that kind of shows you uh, just what we're going to be doing. In this unit, you will learn what sensors are and how to use the bumper sensor on the VR robot. Sensors are devices that inform the VR robot about the world around it. Sensors report values back to the VR robot that can be used to make decisions and control project flow in your code. This unit focuses on the VR robot's bumper sensors. The VR robot has two bumper sensors, the left bumper and the right bumper. A bumper sensor is used to report if the VR robot has bumped into a wall or object. Using information you learn about bumper sensors, you will apply these new skills to solve the wall maze challenge. In this challenge, the VR robot will use the bumper sensors to help navigate through the wall maze playground. Have fun learning how to solve the wall maze challenge. Oh, good. Are you guys ready to learn how to solve the wall maze challenge? Um, so let's go through uh, what this is. So what is a bumper sensor? So we're going to be talking about that and then I'll show you guys. So I'll go in and of course I'll do the code with you. So you're going to learn um, that the bumper sensor is a type of switch and that it either releases a true or false value. Um, so obviously true if it's touching something, false if it's not, right? Um, so it has two bumper sensors on the front of the robot. So there they are. So these are what's used to actually sense if it's touching a wall or touching an object or something. Um, so it says the bumper sensor can, will report a sensor value of true when it's pressed and false when it's released, okay? Um, and then, so how, what do you think if we were like taking a look at the maze, hopefully you're starting to see how this could be helpful, right? Because you could easily program the robot and tell it that every time it hits a wall that it should turn because it knows that it can't go straight anymore. So that's why this is going to be helpful um, because it'll be able to help the robot get through the maze and you don't even have to know if you're turning right or left or anything because you just know that you're going to try turning every time that you hit a wall until you can figure out um, where you're going. So it's used to determine if the robot's touching an object or a wall, right? Um, and then um, this is what the block looks like. So it'll, it'll have left bumper or right bumper, right? And then it will be able to return the value to you such as true or false, depending on if it's touched or if it's not, right? Um, so sensors, if you think back when we were in the beginning of the year, we were learning about the four characteristics of robots, right? And one of the characteristics was sensing, right? In order for a machine to be considered a robot, it needs to have the ability to sense. And sensing is really important because it allows the robot to interact with its environment, right? So it can sense something, it can think about it, and then it can act out and make a decision on what it needs to do. So here's kind of the loop. Sensing. Sensing helps the robot sense the environment. Then, it, then the robot can think and make decisions based on the sensor data from the environment. And then it can act and carry out decisions. So the robot uses sensors to collect data and then make decisions and act, right, in whatever it needs to do. So why is this important? Well, because you think about in robotics, right, if we're trying to get, get a robot to do a certain task, right, and accomplish a certain task, we can't just expect it to just know what to do. We have to give it the ability to know what to do. And sensing is exactly how we do that, right, because if we're almost trying to get it to do something that a human would do, well, you think we have eyes, ears, hands, 
feet. We have all these things that we can use to help us to figure out what to do. And so we need to somehow give the robot sight, give the robot the ability to know if it's going to bump into something, what does it do, right? Um, and so that's why we need sensors, okay? I don't know, do you guys remember going back to um, when we learned about the driverless cars, right? And they have like hundreds of sensors. Why? Because I mean, that's a pretty important task, right? Um, asking a robot to drive you somewhere and trusting that it's going to get you there safely. Of course, you would want it to have zillions of sensors, right? To know, okay, what do I do if a squirrel runs in the road? What do I do if, you know, a car is like in my way, right? It's like, do I just crash into it? Do I know how to stop? Do I know how to pull over? Do I know how to slow down? And so if you could imagine, that's got to be a crazy job working on those driverless cars, right? And trying to come up with a way to, to give them the ability to sense and think and then act safely to keep people alive that are in the car, right? Um, so it's the same thing in a sense with this robot. It's not a driverless car, but it is a robot. And so we're, the sensors are al allowing it to interact with its environment and to be able to do whatever it is that we're getting it to do. So like in this case, we're using a maze and we're trying to... Um, get to the end of the maze, right? So the bumper sensor in this um, project, if we're gonna be using it to help us know when we need to turn. So the VR robot's gonna drive forward and then it's gonna make a 90 degree turn right or left. Um, and it depends when the bumper sensor is pressed, right? So the left bumper sensor, if it's pressed, then it's gonna turn right. Um, so, Let's see, I want to have you guys actually, hang on one second. I wanna have you, we're gonna work on doing an example of this. Okay, so let's just try out some basic code here. So if you pull out, I just pulled it out. If you pull out the drive forward block, and then if you go under control and you take the wait until block, and then under sensing is where you're gonna find the blocks for your sensors. If you get the left bumper pressed and stick it inside so it fits inside of the wait until block, and then you can go back to the drivetrain and get the stop driving block. Then when you run your playground inside of the wall maze, you'll notice what will happen is your robot will drive forward. So if I press start here, um, the robot will drive forward until now look, the sensor has been um, engaged, meaning that it's touch, it knows it's touching the wall. So it just has to stop driving. It can't go anywhere, right? So let's move to now and try to see if we could add in. Um, let's try and have it turn right for 90 degrees when the left um, bumper is pressed. So let's go and grab a turn right 90 degree block. And now let's open up our playground. And let me see if I can make it bigger. It's hard to see it. Let me move it down. Hang on. I want you guys to be able to see, see it. Okay. Hang on a minute. Let me open it again. Okay. You might have to play. It's tricky sometimes because your robot's down at the bottom over here. So let me um, start it. And now it's turning right when the left bumper is pressed. So let's try and change it. Let's have it turn left when the left bumper is pressed. And let's see what that would look like. So now it drives forward and then when the left bumper is pressed, it turns left. So that looks like it, that would be right because now it looks like it could continue driving forward, right, until what? It hits the next wall, and then we could figure out what we would do. So we're trying to really get through the maze, um, and which we're not going to do that today. Um, and we're just kind of just learning how the bumper sensor works. So what I really want you guys to do is just do the code that we just did in the beginning. So you can just try doing this code. Just have it when started, drive forward, wait until the left bumper is pressed, and then stop driving. So that'll be the code that you'll do today. And this is pretty much just letting you test out the bumper sensor, right? 
So you're just seeing your robot move forward and then you're seeing it stop when the bumper sensor is pressed, right? So it's, it's actually true. And there's a way that you can read these. So um, you can always look up here. It says bumper left is true because it's touching. The right is actually true as well because they're both touching the wall evenly. Um, so that's always a way you could see the value of your sensor in this information up here. Um, so that's helpful, right? Um, okay, so this is a pretty easy lesson, I would say. You're just really try testing out using the uh, bumper sensor. So you'll just put this short code in and then you'll rename this. So you would put your name. So like I would put Erica, unit number four, lesson number one, um, bumper sensor. And then I would just rename it and then you would just send it to me. Um, and then there's a short quiz for this. So the first question says, which of the following describes how the bumper sensor works in a VexCode VR project? Does it sense if an object is a certain color? No, it doesn't. Um, does it, um, it is a switch that reports if it is pressed or released? Hmm. So what do you guys think? Is it a switch that is if it's pressed or released? Um, is it, does it move the VR robot forward or backwards um, a specific distance or does it turn the VR robot left or right a specific amount of degrees? Um, and the answer is that B, it's a switch, right? So if it's pressed or released, then we know um, if it's true or not, right? If it's actually touching. Um, so when the bumper sensor returns a value of one, what do you think that means? Is it true or false? Is it touching or not? The answer is true, it's true. It means that it is um, pressed, right? Okay, let's take a look at this one. This is actually the code that we just tested out. So what will happen when the bumper sensor is pressed in this project? Um, so it says, when started, drive forward, wait until your left bumper is pressed and then stop driving. Um, so the VR robot will stop driving. Well, uh, I mean, what do you think? Is that what's gonna happen? Will the VR robot reach maximum velocity? Uh, it doesn't really say anything about that. Will it drive forward um, or will it drive in reverse? So when the bumper pre uh, sensor is pressed, it's gonna stop driving, right? Because that's the block that we have under there. Which kind of block is the pressing bumper block? What do you think it is? I know we didn't, we didn't um, actually go over this, but it is in the lesson. Let me see, I think it was back at the beginning. Um, this is what they call, um, oh, here it is. <clears throat> it's a Boolean. It, it reports if the bumper sensor is pressed. So that's what they call this type of a block. So they have like different types of blocks and they call this a Boolean reporter block. So I know it seems a little bit strange for the name, but that's the type of block that they call it. Um, which of the following is the best reason to use the bumper sensor? Um, is it to instruct the VR robot to report the distance of the nearest object in order to avoid a collision? Is it to instruct the VR robot to use information from its environment? Like, did I collide with a wall? And then make decisions based on the information, like stop when it collides with the wall. Is it to report the velocity? We know it's not that. And is it to set the pen? We know it's not that. So let's think about it. It makes more sense, right? It's to instruct the VR robot to use information from its environment, right? And then make decisions on what to do, like stop so it doesn't collide with the wall, right? So that would be the answer. So um, these are, this is your quiz and this is your code that you're gonna work on. Um, I know it can be a little bit confusing to understand some of these things, but so we'll just go slowly through the unit um, because I believe the next lesson we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually use the wait until block. Um, and then we're gonna be able to see how we can get through the maze a little bit more um, with this. And then eventually by the end of the unit, we're actually gonna do the wall maze challenge by lesson four but we'll just build up slowly. So that way it's not this crazy confusing thing. So why don't you just start out this week, do your drive forward, put in your, your bumper sensor and then put in your stop driving and make sure that your robot stops driving 
when it touches the wall. And then just take your quiz to review um, everything with uh, the, the bumper sensor, okay? All right, guys, so if you have any questions, you can reach out to me in email. Um, otherwise, uh, give it a shot, try it. If you're ever stuck on something, um, yeah, just email me so that way I can help you. All right, guys, um, I'll see you next time. Bye.